Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and this week we're coming to you from another home we're looking at. Uh, we have made an offer on this home. Deb and I are really excited about it. We took some time to go out and depth sound all the water. We mapped it all out to make sure that it would uh, work for us and for the sailboat. If you didn't see last week's episode, please do check it out right up here. We uh, went ahead and promoted uh, Whitney from Swab to Mate. It was pretty cool, and she earned it with all the work she ended up doing down on the boat. We saw the dolphins and the manatees. Yeah. That was this body of water. exited the canal right at the end of this particular street, we were uh, greeted by a whole pod of dolphins right here on the edge of the channel. So there was certainly some excitement as the girls stood up and were kind of looking at the, uh, the dolphins jumping by right in front of us. It was really kind of a cool experience to be just right kind of behind the house here. With the depth sounding complete, we decided to go ahead and just cruise around a little bit in the boat and give the girls a chance to drive too. This was a really cool area we were in. It's a, a bunch of canals through an area called Ponce de Leon Park. And one of the things that we think is pretty cool about this whole area along Charlotte Harbor is the fact that all these little mangrove islands exist. You can go kayaking, dinghy exploring, you can anchor in and around most of these islands. This whole um, waterway that we went through here from this particular housing development, not where we're looking, but another housing development, um, was all over six feet deep. Now we were there at high tide, so it would be tough to go at low tide with our draft, but still a really cool experience. And you know, we went into this um, canal system and then we're out through the channel and ultimately into the Gasparilla Sound. And from here, we had a turn to south and headed down toward Boca Grande Pass, which is out into the Gulf of Mexico and decided to go stop by a marina where we had some friends and see if they were there. 
So last year or so, we uh, took the girls down this way for the summer. We spent a little time here checking out the area, and we hired a little boat uh, captain to take us out and, you know, just do a day of adventuring out on the Gasparilla Sound to check it out and see what was there. And we departed out of this location. It's called the Burnt Store Marina. Uh, kind of a neat little place here. You can see there's a bunch of condos in here. It's a big U-shaped uh, marina. Um, we didn't go all the way in here, but you can see we just drove in a little bit. Really nice area. This would have been a place uh, with depth would have been more than sufficient for our boat here as well but pretty cool area uh, for sure uh, manatees and dolphins right in the marina even well our mission of the day was absolutely to go depth sound out the water behind this house that we had placed an offer on I am actually really excited to go see the house I still haven't seen it yet Deb has done the walkthrough she sent me videos we certainly looked at all the listings um, and it looked like this one was gonna work out it was definitely something that we liked so excited now that we know that the water is going to work uh, we had a great day out on the water we're heading on back as we uh as we're cruising along i will say there is something nice about a go fast boat um, from time to time to be able to buzz along at this kind of a pace so we noticed ahead of us we had quite a bit of clouds coming in so we're hoping to uh, beat those in before the rain We tied up to the dock with thunder rolling, but no rain yet. And we took the time to go ahead and drive by the house. So this is the first time I'm seeing it sort of live. And in a couple of days, we'll go do the home inspection. So after a ton of fun in the sun on the Gasparilla Sound and in Charlotte Harbor, we decided to trade the salt water for a little bit of fresh water. So we went a little bit further south of where we are to an area that is actually brackish water, 80% fresh, 20% salt water. It's over 1.5 million acres of protected wetlands, marshes, and grassy areas. Yep, that's right folks, we're talking about the Everglades. When you look at a map of the state of Florida, the Everglades were formed from water flowing south out of Lake Okeechobee. It flowed down the south side and became known as the Grassy River. The Seminole Indians populated this particular area and lived among the crocodiles and other animals in the Everglades for years. And in the late 1800s, development in South Florida started to occur and they had a concept considered draining the Everglades. And this is where canals were dug along the entire coast from Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and up the actual Palm Coast. Doing so started to cause some changes in the way the watershed out of the state of Florida and the Everglades National Park was formed. Today, 1.5 million acres of protected land that run from the Okeechobee Waterway southwest all the way out to the Gulf of Mexico. So as we embark on this homeschooling adventure with the girls, we figured what a better way to teach them about conservation, about nature, about a little geography, and about animals. Um, so we decided to head south toward the Everglades. We found a cool place just south of Marco Island where we could take them out on an airboat tour ride and really kind of um, show them some cool times down there. We just decided to come on over by Everglades City, check out the Everglades a little bit, and we're going to take the girls out on an airboat ride. I figure they'll enjoy that. That'd be good fun for today, so away we go. So we're at Captain Mitch's airboats, and I'm right over the side of this where the that is a giant gator. And just to give you an idea, they say you can estimate the length of an alligator by measuring from the tip of the nose to the space between the eyes. And for every inch of length, that's about a foot of alligator. So this is about a 12 foot alligator, 12 inches from the bridge of the nose to between the eyes. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Hi. Look how big he is. See him? What am I looking at? What's up there? Ah, uh, is that a panther? A cougar? What is that? Panther. What's in there? An alligator baby. An alligator baby? 
What else is in there? Yeah, just a little bit. There's two in there? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Do you see that as a tail? I don't. Oh, I sure do see the other tail, yep. He's right there. Yeah, he's hiding Hi, there. Buddy. Hi, buddy. Hey, buddy. He's out. Now you go, just grab his tail, behind his front legs, a little bit higher up. There you go, you've got it. He won't try to bite you. If he wiggles, don't drop him. What do you think? He's <laughs> <laughs> not for Way we sacrifice the grandchildren, Jazz. <laughs> What's your <laughs> See how close you can get him filming.
there, huh? I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, by all means, please do subscribe and give the video a thumbs up and a like. We will see you next week as we go into some details around the home inspection that we plan on doing on that house I mentioned in the beginning of this particular week's video. Thanks, everybody. Safe sailing.